In the weeks, months, and years that followed my divorce, many people wanted to know the ins and outs of everything that had taken place in my marriage. I decided to say nothing. My pastor, my family, my closest friends knew, and that was enough for me. Magazines and newspaper reporters contacted me, offering to let me tell my side of the story. I mean, how ridiculous is that? There's such an unhealthy thirst in our culture to know all the details of someone's pain and brokenness. But life is not a spectator sport. It's to be lived in vulnerability and truth and community. I realized I didn't need everyone in the world to understand or approve of me. I found joy in being loved by God and resting in the protective shadow of His mercy and His grace. As David himself prayed, show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. I came to realize that God's love is never based on our behavior, good or bad. It's always based on his nature. Understanding that kind of grace is the work of God in our lives. And we each walk our own journey to understanding it. Mine came in a small Episcopal church in Washington, D.C at the lowest point of my life. I'd given my life to Christ as an 11-year-old girl and been involved in church throughout my teenage years. I never rebelled, though honestly, I think the reason was more out of fear than faith. I'd, I'd gone to seminary, then I joined Youth for Christ, and then moved to America. I'd worked with Dr. Billy Graham and had spent five years as co-host of the 700 Club. But during all that time, I don't think I really understood my own need for grace. I mean, it made sense to me that if you engage in sexual sin or you drank like a fish or stuffed things up your nose other than a Kleenex, then of course you needed grace. But I was just a scared little good girl. Why did I need grace? It was only as I sat in the back row of that Washington DC church that I began to understand finally. I'd been coming to God with hands full of things I'd done for him for years. It was an exhausting, punishing way to live. For me, grace was simply clinging to the cross. Grace had always been about Jesus, not about me. So after the end of my first marriage, I decided to just disappear for a while. Some were kind enough to offer me help to put my ministry back together and to counter any false rumors that were circulating. But I said no. It's true at one point, I longed for that. But honestly, the more I searched my heart, the more it became crystal clear that it's actually not what I wanted. I have no rights as a believer. I'm a sinner saved by grace, called to live a surrendered life. <laughs>